Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the Start 11 show. Everton versus Crystal Palace, Goodison Park, 8 o'clock on a Monday night. Obviously, you've got a decent record against Crystal Palace. Let's hope that continues because uh, we could do with winning a game of football in the Premier League, I think. I think it's a little bit overdue now. So uh, let's get back to winning ways on Monday night. Right, in goal, obviously, Jordan Pickford, he'll start the game. Um, obviously, been doing well. Of late and most of the season, lots of clean sheets. So he continues in goal, of course. Uh, back four, right back, uh, going to continue with Ben Godfrey. I do think he's done all right in the last few games. He certainly um, hasn't made any kind of major mistakes. His pace is, is, is huge in the back line, that recovery pace. Um, we don't really use the full-backs offensively anyway, so... What difference does it make if he can't attack? I mean, at least he can get up and down the pitch because of his pace and, pace and his athleticism. So, I you know he went off last week against Manchester City and obviously I think they scored both of the goals after he went off. So, um, hopefully he's okay. He had a bit of a bug. And it allows Seamus Coleman the time he needs to recover properly um, because when he's come back from injury, he has got injured quite quickly soon after. Um, so, It'll set, settle him down a bit. And obviously, Ashley Young's been playing in midfield. And again, those two um, can play in that position, as can Nathan Patterson. But the manager doesn't really like Nathan Patterson by the looks of it or doesn't think he, he's ready. So, Ben Godfrey at right back. Uh, left back, Vitaly Michalenko, who's just got married. So, congratulations to him. And he'll he'll want to round off the, the, the marriage with three points, I suspect. So... Um, he obviously, he continues at left back. Centre backs, James Tarkowski, obviously um, our captain. So, and he's been doing very, very well. And uh, Jared Branthwaite, who obviously both of them are. It's a good partnership. It's working, and and long may it continue as we go forward. Uh, into midfield, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because suddenly we've gone from having. One, well, the last time when we played Crystal Palace away in the FA Cup, we had one centre midfielder. Now we've got, now we've got four centre midfielders. Suddenly the manager's got options, and I've got to think about this a little bit harder. Um, certainly two of them walk straight back in the team for me, and there's just a question on who plays out of. James Garner and Adrissa Garner Gay. That really is the position. But I'm, but straight away, Onana for me comes straight back into the side. Um, he he just has something that no one else has on the team, and that's the ability to receive the ball and pass the ball without any fuss or any worry. Uh, he's brave in possession, and he wants them. He wants to um, move the ball around the pitches, and he's a good tackler as well. Uh, and I don't really understand why people don't see that in his game. He's just he's just easily our best midfielder for that kind of thing. The way he just he just takes takes the ball so comfortably, whether it's from the back, plays in the back, or from other plays in midfield, he's so comfortable in possession. Um, and he's been a miss, so it's good to have him back. Obviously, he came back last week against Manchester City, so for he, for me, he starts alongside them. This is the one, and I'm still I, he has a city right now. I'm not. I I'm literally just thinking of reasons for. Why? Which one would be dropped? It's so. This one's really, really difficult because James Garner has been pretty consistent. But I think I think Garner. I actually think that this Garner Gay is a is a better presser. Um. So for me, this this one is a real tough one. Um, I think I'll probably just give it to James Garner. I think James Garner just edges it because he's been such a consistent player through through. The um, through the season, um, and I think that's really harsh on a Disagana gay because I really can't separate them. And I think the managers had this issue certainly early on in the season when he pushed James Garner out wide. I I think it's really hard to separate these two players. There'll be different different people will have different favourites. I appreciate that. Um, a lot of people ask what does James Garner do, but then a lot of people think. I just a kind of gaze a liability. I just don't think there's that much between them. I think experience is of Gar the experience of Garn is huge, and I think he's been brilliant in the last few last couple of games. Um, but Garner's James Garner's performances are quite consistent, and have been for a while. 
And I think that's just going to be the edge for me for this game. And I have the ability to have a Jishagana Gates come off the bench like he like he did in the league game. I think it was um, for when we won and he scored the winning goal. Um, so I'm just I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give it to James Garner, and that's just because quite literally because of consistency through the season. And and there's but I don't think there's much between them. But let me know in the comments certainly which one you'd go for. I don't think there's a wrong answer, and the manager will make a decision based on all the tactical elements of the game. That maybe I, that I'm not. I don't see me. You know, I'm just I'm just going for as as me, obviously. Um, ahead of them, Abdullah Decore has to come straight back into the side if he's fit. If he's not fit, then maybe you. That's how you squeeze the th the other three. And but yeah, we need an attacker in there. Simple as that. We need an attacker. We need uh, the core right back. You know, the last game we won, he went off at half time. Um, in so it's massively important that we get him back on the side. And he's, you know, he he played against he played sorry he played against Villa as well. But obviously, um, that's when he got the reoccurrence of an injury. So if he's fit and and he's, there's no risk, then get him back in the side and hopefully. Get him back scoring, and we get back to winning ways. He's such a key, he's such a key component for this team, and he can't be replaced because there's just nobody like him who can play that split striker role that has the strength and and the pace and the presence and knows how to play midfield, but knows how to play as a split striker. We just don't have anyone who has that that natural instinct to score goals. Nobody else has it in the midfield. Um, and now Wideman don't have it, Jack Harrison doesn't have it, they just don't have of putting the ball in the back of the net. Um, but he does, he does, so he returns for me. Um, on the left-hand side, Dwight McNeil, obviously Dan Jume is going to be missing for the for the next few weeks, certainly. Um, so Dwight McNeil, even though I, I just don't think, I just don't think he's been in great form, but, you know, having a game one, one, once a week, does give him the ability to get that fitness back on the on the training field and the schedule has cleared out a little bit. And I think it's only a game at Newcastle midweek um in March, I think it is. That is the only that's the only midweek game I think for the rest of the season, apart from probably the Merseyside Derby, which probably won't happen on the seventeenth of March because they'll likely be in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. So it is week to week going forward. Um and hopefully that that allows him to get fitter and, and we see more of the player that we saw last season in the second half of the season. But what I would say about Dwight McNeil is his set pieces are still incredibly important because that's how we've been scoring a lot of our goals. So he's on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, Jack Harrison back into his natural position. Um, Ashley Young's done all right, but Ashley Young doesn't really provide an attacking presence as such. Harrison does. Um, and... With the Corey being back, he can play back over there. So no issue there. Again, I, he's not been brilliant, but he has contributed goals and assists. So from that point of view, it's worked. And up front, uh, Dominic Calvert-Loon. I thought he was pretty poor last week against Manchester City, um, but that doesn't mean Beto should start because I, I'm still yet to be convinced by Beto. I really am. I think he's... I just don't think we know how to use him. And the way we use Dom... Um, isn't great because there's a lot more of Dom, I think, out there. But we don't use him that way. We don't make chances for Dom. That's another thing. Whether he's, whether he's scored goals or not, we just don't make chances for him. Um, I want to see Dom be more aggressive. I want to see him being more selfish. I want to see him picking up the ball and try and run with it a little bit. There's no reason why we can't put the ball in the channels for Dom to run onto as well. And there was a training video out the other day and you were like seeing his pace. The kid really does have pace, but we never allow him to use it because we never, it's everything, we, we just whack everything up to him. We just don't make chances for him. Um, for me, he's still on one strike, and I'm, I'm not convinced by Beto. Uh, I don't think he's done enough. I don't think that's a big enough reason to put him in the team because he doesn't play like Dom. You can't play along with Beto because you can't hold the ball up. Um, Beto still is very much a player to come off the bench and be a bit of a cameo. So, for me, it's Dom up front. But let me know what your thoughts in the comments anyway. Let me know um, 
there you go. If you want to find out all the stats about all the players, get over and download the SofaScore app. The link is in the description. I always use it for my play ratings after the game as well, so make sure you download that. It really helps the channel out if you download it using our link. Uh, the link is in the description. Um, massively important. Anyway, there you go. Let me know your thoughts. We'll find out tomorrow at 7 o'clock who the manager picks Monday night, 7 o'clock. Let us, you know, he'll tell us, and then everyone can have a little moan. There you go. Thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you want more great videos, daily live videos, join us over on Toffee TV Premier. The link in the description. QR codes come on the screen now. See you later.